Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. Today is the first part of December and we're going to take a winter tour of the garden just to show you guys what my garden looks like in the winter time. Some things are asleep, but some things look really lively this time of the year, just like these cryptomera trees that are gleaming right now. So when all the flowering blooms are gone to sleep, then it allows you to have some of the other plants to shine, just like all the evergreens that I'm going to show you Before today. Before we get started with our tour, I want to explain to you guys how YouTubers get paid. If you ever heard of the word monet monetization, I never heard of that word before. I watched Laura with Garden Answer for years and years before I even started my own garden and never heard that term and never really wondered how they got paid. But monetization means that you are a YouTube part of their partnership, part of their family, and you have to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch minutes before you can be monetized. You have to be monetized sorry, with YouTube before you can get paid. So currently I have my watch hour minutes, which I am way ahead of the game on that part, but I do not have my subscribers. So as of today, I'm at like 784 subscribers. So just so you guys know that we're not getting paid. And the reason why I'm telling you this is for all those small creators that are out there that don't really want to explain or are afraid to ask. I'm not afraid to ask for subscribers. I do it all the time. But I do want to tell you how we get paid because a lot of people don't realize that. When you hit that subscribe button for me, like right now, that means that you're not going to be paying for a subscription. It's free to subscribe and that you're just gonna get notifications that I have a new video coming out and that's it. So like my mom, she watches all my videos on YouTube and she doesn't really know how to go to YouTube and like log in as like a Google, I'm sure she has a Google account because you had to have a Google account in order to be able to subscribe or be able to be able to she comment. She definitely knows when you're cheating the system and have like a ton of subscribers under some kind of different name. So you can't do that. You really can't cheat the system. So for anyways, but I do put some of my videos on YouTube and that's how my mom goes and watches my videos is on YouTube. The only time that I put my video on YouTube is just to get to put it out there and to share it with more people because hopefully some people on Facebook may not know that I'm on YouTube and I can get some new subscribers that way. But anyways, just wanted to share that with you. It doesn't mean that you have to pay for a subscription. It's definitely free. And once you get a thousand subscribers and you start getting paid from like the ads and you think you can have like a Amazon shop online, which you could still be an affiliate with Amazon like I am. So if you go to my description, which I always have the description of what my video is about, and then sometimes I'll have links to things that I like to sell. Like if I love Biotone, then I might have my Biotone in my link where you can click on that link and go right to Amazon and we'll get like a small percentage. So that's another way that YouTubers get paid once you're monetized. And another way, the biggest one is those ads that you see that pop up on the first part of the video. So if you watch one of my videos, which you're probably watching now, and I had an ad on the very front part of my video, I did not get paid for that. So YouTube is able to keep all that money for that revenue for that ad. And once you're monetized, then I get 55% and they keep 45%, but you have to be monetized first. So one way is through ads, two is through being like an affiliate through a program. I'm also like affiliated with Power Planter. So I'm not going to, <laughs> do you hear that bird? Oh, just a blessing. I'm not going to put a product out there that I don't love and want you guys to love as well. So I'll promise you that, that I'm never going to give you any kind of product that I'm not going to believe in myself. But I do get a small earning off like anything that you order through Power Planter or any of my Amazon products. So that's another way. And then YouTube will also pay a certain amount of money per like say 1,000 views off your videos, which is a very small percentage and that's not like how you get paid like the largest of your amount. And 
And then of course, you know, once you get monetized, there's those like little, you can donate if you really like a channel, you can donate money and stuff, stuff like that. But those are the four biggest ways that YouTubers get paid. Now, I never in a million years thought that I would be doing this. And one reason why I'm doing YouTube is that one, the very first reason is that I felt God wanted me to do this. He was tugging, tugging on my heart to the point where I'm like, okay, I give up because I'm not the best with my words. I'm like, you really want me to do this? But anyway, so I pushed myself through it and now I enjoy doing YouTube. So I hope and I dream for myself that I can possibly one day do YouTube part-time and do my ultrasound part-time because I don't think I'd ever really want to give that up because that is like where my earnings come in and that's how I can buy my plants that I want to plant and I can share with you guys as well. And the second part is that I felt like at least if God really wanted me to do this and I'm doing it that I can leave a legacy to my kids so they could always like look back onto my channels and learn from me or just see me in my video so that was the second reason and of course third is that I do hope that I can make some money off of it one day so if I go to my analytics and show you guys I have probably 80% of people that will watch my videos but aren't subscribing like I don't understand why but anyways I hope that you love my videos I hope that I can bring you some inspiration and that I hope I can teach you about plants. And I feel like that me doing this brings, I feel like plants is a way for me to be, to be creative into my garden and I can use plants to paint pictures of in my garden. That's kind of like why I love planting. Plus it's good for my soul, it gives me something to do, it gives me something to look forward to. I love the beauty of all the flowers and all the blooms that I bring you. So with all that, I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna show you what my garden looks like in the winter time. So I wanna start with my back porch. So I just recently purchased this furniture for ourselves so we can sit out here and enjoy all the gorgeous beauty and work that I've done. So you can tell that I have some Christmas pillows out there right now. And I'm gonna swing around. I have curtains here so I can make it feel roomy and I can bring my inside to the outside. And then I'm gonna swing around just to show you guys what my backyard looks like. Not making you too dizzy. This is where I can like enjoy my birds out there. And just having lots of trees and lots of bushes brings all of these birds to your garden as well. This back porch I stamped with a stencil and some uh, concrete paint and I do really want to share that guys with you and I was, had already bought the paint to share that guys with you to show you how I did it, but I didn't quite get to it. So maybe in the springtime. So over here on the side porch, this is the start of my cottage garden. I have a palm there that's in a container. Of course that is for whenever the frost gets it. I can just throw that over top of that. And I have some strawberries in this container. This container was made from Michael Kaur. If you are familiar with the aqua pots, he helped design that as well. So I don't didn't really have a lot of strawberries, but you can see that they're still putting out some blooms there. And the color looks nice too. But next year I need to move this in more of a sunny area. It just doesn't get quite as much sun. And I have an empty pot because I tried to put this palm in that pot to bring it inside and it was a complete fail so i still have that pot right there to do something with and then my husband made me this i'm gonna say it is a shepherd's hook but a sturdy one because these are made of wrought iron and then with the cocoa liners and when you filled them up with the soil and the plants and all the water they were quite heavy and they would not support the shepherd's hook would not support that. 
So he made me this, which he was quite handy and I love it. So I just bought some hooks that I really like. And then we put a light on it up there that's solar. And I have two of these and I kind of offset that. One higher up and one down lower. So I can change that out with annuals anytime I feel. And then we have a magnolia here, magnolia tree. And your magnolias, you can trim up on the bottom there if you don't like the lower limbs. And we'll get to the side garden in just a little bit. So down here, this is what my gara looks like right now. And I have not cut that back yet because it's still giving me some pretty interest. And then right here is phlox and I will cut that back before spring. And then we have some tea olives, which we call the sweet osmentus. And I planted these so I could have some screening from my neighbor's door here. Sasha looks out this door and she will come over this way. Sasha will bark out the door. So I tried to give her some kind of privacy between that and my neighbors, but I have four of those and they'll eventually start to grow up and become like a hedge. Let me show you these little sweet blooms that are on these sweet olives right now. Get up a little closer here. So these will definitely give you some winter interest too. They're not deciduous, means that they are keeping their leaves on them and they're nice and green and gorgeous. And then I have some daylilies that I haven't cut back. And then you can see all the leaves from this crepe myrtle that has fallen. This is what my lavender looks like right now. And this is sweet romance lavender which does okay in the garden, but it can definitely do better. This has been in the garden for three years and it's not really grown that much, but still survives. Okay, so I just turned around. I have a couple of rocks that are right here in the garden as well to give some of that winter interest. These are David Austin roses, the Charles Darwin. And I just kind of trim them up so they'll look nice and tight and I will not give these a hard trim until February 14th around Valentine's Day. And then on the side garden here, I have some junipers. We're on a hill, so I planted these junipers so it would help soil erosion and give it some interest on this side of the garden as well. And then I do have some Russian sage that does not do well for me. Maybe I need to transplant that a different area so it gets more sun and then I've put this fountain to sleep so I cleaned it out really well and just turned this bowl upside down so it won't contain any water and then I unplugged the plug so the water will drain out of this when it rains and it just rained this morning that lovely cryptomeria tree that has gotten probably about 12 to 13 feet tall right now. And this right here is a wadula. We'll say that differently. And you can tell that the leaves are starting to drop. I still have some of the real dark red leaves on there. I like the color of this plant because it gives some different color interest into the, my garden. And then I trimmed it up really well with the lower limbs this past springtime. So this grows on old wood, which means if I trimmed it now, I would cut all my blooms off for the next year. And I don't want to do that. And then we just planted all of these up with the hyacinths. I have the deep purple hyacinths in there. So right now I have the violas that are just spilling over top and then I put that moss in there. So 20 bulbs of hyacinths in there is gonna be gorgeous in the springtime. 
And this is the cat's pajamas. Not really growing well in this spot. Maybe it doesn't get enough sun. Need to move that. There's a lot of things in my garden that I need to move right now. This is the Walker's Low Nepeta, which gets quite larger than the cat's pajamas. You can see some spent blooms there on my cone flowers. I've really been trying to plant more, uh, what I could say, more low growing ground cover in the garden. This is a foxglove that I just planted. And I think it's a biennial, so I may not see blooms for that for a couple of years. And then I replanted some of my bubblegum petunias and the frost has not gotten them. So they'll probably survive till next year. And then we have some grass that's gone to sleep, but I haven't cut it back because it still gives gorgeous interest. And this is a bluebeard we planted. This is what some of the uh, sedum is doing right now. The bubblegum petunias. So I need to move this since it's not anywhere near Thanksgiving anymore. And then I removed all the Black Eyed Susan off this obelisk and got that all cleaned up to reattach it right there and then you can see some of my juniper on the other side some butterfly bushes right there another magnolia tree I originally had another cryptomera tree in this place I had originally had five and I've got four and then I replaced it with this magnolia Tree just to give it some separation and I have another magnolia on the upper opposite side that tree just would not do well it I believe it got blight so not sure but I kept on cutting cutting and treating it and just finally just pulled it up so that was a lesson learned not to wait as long when something's struggling just get rid of it this is the second planter that I have concrete planter that looks like a woven basket gorgeous violas I originally had an all yellow but I really love that this rose color is mixed in with it too I think that's really pretty and this is the candy cane uh, spirea and then I had left some of the tags here. I want to really get me some nice tags to put in my garden just for whenever I just can't seem to think of what the name is. And this is the new lilac tree that I planted. And behind it was the puffer fish hydrangea and it's lost all of its leaves. Of course, more of those junipers. I have two different types of junipers there. I love the foliage on these cryptomeras and you can see the new growth there. Really, really pretty. Some more of the super petunias that I replanted in the ground. I feel like super, super petunias do really well, do better in the ground than they do in the pots for me anyway. And then more of the Nepeta. Let me come back here. I have a whole row of Nepeta. They're at the very edge of the garden here. And you can see the grass has gone dormant too. We have the Mervinita grass. That's why I really like to have something that separates the mulch and the grass it keeps this from creeping in there too. I mean, it doesn't prevent it 100%. We still have to pull some sometimes. And this is the third container. You can see one, two, three. Another Wadula. This is Wine and Roses Wadula. This is where I had planted some of my 
daylilies that I've already came up and I left the tags there so I know which ones they were. I planted like 12 different new daylilies. And this is another container that I just put the violas in. There's no, nothing underneath that. No spring bulbs like there is these three. I have the highest ends in all of these three containers. And then working my way down, these are the cat's pajamas, Nepeta. They get more sun here, so I think they're doing a lot better. And I also have another type of Nepeta in here as well. It's not called cat's pajamas, but cat's meow also. And you can see this right there behind the rose bushes are the cat's meow. They're a little bit larger. And I'd already pruned them back and they still look gorgeous. So they may not completely lose their leaves. They may stay a little bit of evergreen like this one does. This is part of the mint family. There's no blooms on there, but still given some winter interest, which I still like. And then here I have more David Austin roses. I have two Olivia's, one Olivia here. This is a celebration rose. I have Olivia and then back on my, oh, it's not obelisk whatever that's called. I cannot think of the name right now. Uh, anyways, I have a climbing rose on that. And I do have some clematis growing on that too. Happy Jack clematis. So let me back up. This is a Nellie Stevens. And you can see where I had some new growth that popped out and then the frost got some of that new growth right there. But I had pruned these up. These Nellie Stevens will get, I'm gonna say maybe 15 to 20 feet tall, but I trimmed the lower limbs up right here and made them into like a lollipop, which I really like. So I have two here and then I have two on the other side flanking because I like symmetry in my garden really bad about not having symmetry. Comment below if you guys are the same. I don't know if it's just me. And then something made my planter fall down there. I need to fill these. They've been, it's been raining all morning long. So need to get me some more bird feed, but this is what the, my bird feeder looks like. This is all common space back here, so this is not my land. I would love to be able to plant more up, but some big boulders that were in our area when they were developing, and this is a lake house that we can rent out. So we have like book clubs down there. Another Nellie Stevens, and you could see these gorgeous berries on there and of course in the springtime too they have these lovely white flowers that the bees love gives a great big dark interest in the garden and then coming on the other side of the cottage garden bless this little heart this is a hydrangea that is a panicle hydrangea but the deer got it completely all during last year. I didn't even get to see one bloom on it. So I'm gonna have to be more of an advocate of keeping some kind of dairy deterrent on that. This is a Rose of Sharon. So I'm starting to get some height on it. It's taller than me right now. I will cut this back by a third in the springtime. And you can see some of those spent blooms. This is a non sterile plant so it will not drop the uh, seeds and plant all over the place. So this is one of those that will not do that. And I have several of these in the garden. All this 
areas where I had dahlias. I do have some daffodils in this area that will probably come up in the springtime. I should plant more though. And this is where my clematis is. Trellis. That's what this thing's called. This is a three-way trellis and I have my climbing rows on it along with the clematis. And the rose from David Austin's called a Charfire, sh Charfrad. I don't know, I can't say some of those words. This is another Rose of Sharon. I have three different colors in the garden. This one is a blue chiffon. And then one is a lilac and one is a magenta. Another juniper some creeping phlox. I'd already pruned some back and some has flushed back out again, but it will come up fresh from the ground this spring. And then another purple butterfly bush and some more phlox. These are, this is all tall phlox. Look how pretty that juniper is. So if you need a hill to plant up and take up a lot of space this is a great option for you like I said it helps with the erosion too and this was Miss Molly that's hanging on there so butterfly bushes lose some leaves but not completely so they do have some evergreen on them also in the winter time and let's see this is the other side of the cottage garden where all these junipers are on the hill. So I originally had 10. I think I lost one. But this is a different juniper than this one right here. Very similar, but just a little bit different in texture. And when the sun hits this in the summertime, it gets really golden. This is the new rose of Sharon that I planted. So you can see how tiny it is right now. This one is a light pink rose of Sharon and it has a variegated leaves on it too. And then some of the daylilies that are popping up. This is another Russian sage. I don't know why they don't do well for me. They do awesome for Laura with Garden Answer, but not so much for me. Like I said, they're there, just not thriving. And then we have some Serendipity Alliums. I love this plant. Wish I had some more of that. I might plant some more when I plant up the side garden. But these look like the Alliums that pop up in the springtime with the little tiny round purple balls. Deer do not like this one. They don't like anything in the onion family. Let's see, let's turn around here. That's what the side garden looks like right now. This is the very back of my property. This is my rose garden. So these are sprinter boxwoods. This is Alexandra of Kent, David Austin Rose. This gorgeous beauty is the Oakland Holly. I have three of those. So I have four different quadrants of the sprinter boxwoods. One, two, three, and four, and they surround my fire pit. So in the middle of the fire pit, it is round. And then the boxwoods kind of like make an, an circle here, as you can see, all the way around. And then each area have different types of David Austin roses. This one's Gabrielle Oak. And there's five roses in there. These may or may not completely lose all of their leaves. So in the springtime when I prune all this back, 
I will remove all the leaves as well. And then I have some winter interest here with the concrete. I just came out with a video on this lavender. This one's a different David Austin rose, a little bit lighter pink. It's called Eustigia of. You can see a little bit of the winter burn on this boxwood right here, so that's normal. Just to let you know, this is three years of these boxwoods and they're almost about ready to close together to give me a tight hedge. So this Oakland Holly, it got some kind of fungus and it's starting to rebound back, but you can tell where this is a lighter color in the base. So we treated it with a fungicide, the copper fungicide, and also gave it some iron. And it's slowly working its way up the tree there. It sure did turn faster than it did recouping. And then these are my zinnias that I need to get all out of the box here. This is the above ground container that I have. And I try to put all my cut flyers in there. And then backing up, this is the urn, the Galloway urn from Unique Stone. I love their quality and their uniqueness. All their workmanship is just hands down precious so we have some hookra dusty miller violas another type of hookra so these are perennials for me so when i'm finished with this in the springtime i'll replant those in the ground some of our firewood we have some water bass for the birds So the frost got some of these blooms and they're just pretty much about done. I just have a few buds. So I do need to come and prune these bushes back a little bit, but not a hard prune until February. Another lavender plant. And this is the other side of this. This is Boscobel Rose. My crepe myrtles have lost all of their leaves but you can still see some of the spent blooms on there. And that's what these spent blooms look like a little bit closer. Now come March, we'll come back and we'll cut this down. Some people call it crepe murder, but we're not gonna murder it, I promise you. So I'd say if my limb is here, probably we'll cut back, probably right there or so. And sometimes I'll probably even remove some of these lower limbs. Now, do you see how this limb right here is crossing over this limb? That's not good. So we'll probably come in and cut this limb back like that. This is not something that you want to keep. Anyways, I'm going to say maybe we will cut this tree probably a third to a half. But definitely won't cut it all the way back. They do benefit from giving it a trim too, by the way. And these are the other lollipop Nellie Stevens. I really like these. And this is my hydrangea garden, the very end of it. So I love this butterfly bush more than any of them that I have. And I got this from Home Depot and can't even tell you what the brand name of that one is. But you can see that there's the spent blooms but still deciduous, not deciduous, half deciduous. They've dropped some leaves, but keeping most of their leaves. And this is the seed on that's spent. So we can cut this back actually if I wanted. And this is a standard little lime hydrangea. We'll still have some of the spent blooms on there. You can cut these blooms back now if you'd like but don't give it a hard prune until probably March. But if you wanted to cut the blooms off, you can cut them about, about right here. And then 
March or so when these these little areas right here start to bud out, then you can start to prune it by one third. You don't want to prune them too much because then the limbs on these won't be sturdy enough to hold these heavy blooms. They are really big blooms. So going down to the ground level, you can see my lemon coral sedum. This is a Miss Daisy that will bloom just one time for me. I wish she would bloom more. I do have some peonies in there that you can't see at all right now. This is a penicinum that I've never seen bloom. I need to replant that somewhere. And then these are all the hydrangeas. Up here. These are little lime hydrangeas that will get about five feet tall. And then this looks gorgeous up against these emerald green arborvitaes. That's what that texture looks like. So this is going to give us a nice hedge of privacy. And I'm trying to work on thinning these out a little bit. The limbs are still too thick. You can see my plant supports there, but it was much needed when I very first started planting them, but maybe not so much now. I could probably remove them. I'm working on ground cover. So there's a hardy geranium. This is actually an annual, but a perennial for us, the lemon coral sedum. This is my Miss Grace from Unique Stone. This is the other Magnolia, Little Gem Magnolia. And then I have a whole hedge of these little lime hydrangeas. And this is what this side garden, my hydrangea garden, looks like right now. going to go to the skinny side yard so this this is my skinny side yard so this area gets morning sun only and afternoon shade and these sprinter boxwoods do look great even in the shade they'll do well this was a button bush that lost all of its leaves after I planted it and I haven't seen any leaves up here so I'm hoping that they will in the springtime and these were some sedum and comb flowers, which I just learned that sedum does not like to be wet. So I'm gonna have to probably move these sedum probably before this winter. And then I planted 300 of the Jack and Jill tulips in this area. And then I over planted them with these violas. And they'll come up through these violas. So don't worry, they look gorgeous together. This is a camellia, and I'm gonna get another trellis and train it up on the side of the road here. Not on the side of the road, side of the house. I'm trying to get that bloom there for you. This is white by the gate camellia. I have two of these in this side garden. I just replanted those from containers I had on the side of the house in the back. So when these sprinter boxwoods grow together, they'll create a hedge for me as well. And this is the Linton Rose. And uh, I cannot remember what that other thing was. I'll throw it up on the screen. This is my new camellia that I just planted, Ample Blossom. You can see this is where I have part of my drip still showing right in there. I wanted to keep it exposed so I didn't plant or I did not drill right next to that, putting my tulips in. I still have some concrete pieces there that I'm gonna paint what's on the back porch there just to show you a demonstration. This is another 
white by the gate camellia that's not bloomed out yet. I think this one just doesn't get as much sun. I hope it blooms for me. So this, this is what the skinny side yard looks like going down into the backyard there. Now we're in the front of the house and I planted up this aqua pot several times. I just put some gorgeous spring blooms in there with some violas. And I'm at the front porch here. This is just a small skinny little area that I had geraniums in over the summertime. Small container of violas and Dusty Miller. This was the three-tiered container from Kinsman that I planted up with just greens and some rosemary on top. And then I have some winter pillows and wreaths out right there on the front porch. So I still have quite a bit of winter interest. This is a juniper that spiraled up. And then I have my Christmas decorations that are out right now. Those are those holly balls that are new this year. And then I just had a video out how I did this gorgeous garland here. These are blooms that came from my garden. And these are artificial flowers here. So I just planted up 300 gentle giant tulips in this area and I did not show you on video because I was tired, but I trenched these. So I actually had already had these planted in the ground and I pulled them up and made a big trench. And I'll show you what a trench looks like of nothing but tulips. But I trenched that whole area and put those tulips underneath and then placed my viola is back on top. So it was just easier for me to do that than to have to go around all these violas. I do have some containers here in the very front. This is the Miss America Kale. This is a viburnum. I have some sprinter boxwoods here that are creating a hedge. I have a spiral boxwood. And then I have the Japanese maple tree. And you can see that it's losing its leaves there a little bit too. Another viburnum. This plant's supposed to give me some berries this winter. That's what you call berries. I'm not sure. Maybe they're might be a few more that I can see coming out. We'll see. This plant's pretty new for me. And then I have an azalea that probably does not like this because it stays wet in the front yard. I need to probably move that out as well to the side. More violas. You can see how massive this hardy uh, hibiscus was. Crazy. This is this past year's stems, and that was the year before. So this plant loves this area and is on a bit of a steroid. And then I have a holly that was original to the house here. And then a climbing David Austin rose called Lady by the Lake. I planted two roses there, which I probably did not need to do. And I have a few blooms here, of course it's rained on it this morning. Let's see if I can grab it. Just a soft, delicate, light pink rose. And I have a hoblisk there that's trying to hold up some of those stems. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I wanted them to wrap around this pole, but they're not really wanting to bend with me. I'm gonna have to figure this out. 
got some concrete edging here that I really like. Of course, that keeps all the mulch in and this Bermuda grass out. And then here's the side garden that I haven't really done a lot yet with yet, but I'm going to this coming spring. And this was a hydrangea standard tree. I think it was the bigger form, not the little line, but it was big. And I pruned it all back because it was heavy and the limbs were pointing down. And then I have another David Austin rose here. That's doing awesome. And then you can see the other limelight, little limelight standard tree down there. And this is what my front yard looks like from a distance. We have a deer and a sleigh that my husband had to rewire and re-bulb it because they go out every year, which is quite aggravating. All right guys, that was my December garden tour. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you just, you subscribe below for me and any other small creators that need your help. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.